Greetings dear friends around the world, greeting from East Europe and uh, this is my second update on the situation in Ukraine. Uh, as you know, being in East Europe and being part of a country that is militarily neutral, not part of NATO, uh, that is exposed both to the influences of the East and West, that has been impartially, uh, impartially uh, getting news from both sides, both the Ukrainian and Russian side. I'm in a very unique position indeed at this time in human history to provide to you perhaps some uh, details and updates on things that you may not know or that you may not hear from your own media outlets. Uh, in particular, you would not hear about anything from the Russian side, rather you would hear everything from the Ukrainian side and the uh, Unilateral support for the Ukrainian people and Ukrainian state is to a such a level that um, it completely ignores all the factors and uh, all the causes of this current conflict as well as the consequences. So uh, this has been the twenty. It has been the twentieth day since this war between the two Slavic, brotherly Slavic nations, Russia and Ukraine, broke out. It indeed grieves the whole world, it grieves my Slavic heart as well, to see the two brotherly nations basically being at war with one another, destroying one another, and sadly being filled with hatred for one another. Um, one thing is for sh is certain, my dear friends, and that thing that is certain is that uh, uh, now nowadays we are going to see now another power block emerging right before our eyes, and that power block emerging will be called the Euro-Asian bloc. Uh, all these things that have been happening very well align with the biblical prophecy. Anyway, the biblical prophecy has told us for many decades, for centuries now, that the uh, Anglo-Saxon bloc is going to be going down, that we are going to see the, th the two... Uh, well, we can see the three emerging powers in our modern world. One will be the Arab, the Arab uh, world, the Arab Confederation, most likely headed by Egypt. Uh, the second power block will be the Euro-Asian power block headed by Russia, indeed. And the third power block will be European, the United States of Europe headed by Germany. As I said, the Anglo-Saxon bloc has been prophesied because of their origin, their lost Israelites, it has been prophesied that their domin domination over the world is coming to an end and their total decline, uh, which will basically end up in the Great Tribulation, their total decline is going to be happening and we're seeing all of this before our very eyes. Uh, uh, there have been news every day, of course, and I'm trying to be selective as to give you what would be the latest and the most important news. One of the greatest news with, which generates much hope with all of us is that there have been so far the four rounds of talks between the Ukrainian and Russian representatives and uh, tomorrow, that will be Wednesday, March uh, 16th, uh, the fifth round is supposed to take place. The first two rounds took place when they met in person on neutral territories. One of their meetings happened in Belarus, guaranteed by the Belarusian authorities, and then they continued their meetings over internet links. Uh, well, Ukraine has expressed some reserved optimism that a compromise could be found, while the Russian side continues to insist on its own demands and requirements. Demand number one from Russia is that Ukraine would remain a neutral country, militarily neutral, that it would not join uh, uh, NATO, NATO. That's number one. Number two is that the Ukraine would be demilitari demilitarized anyway, that it will be never pose a threat to the Russian security. And the third, perhaps the last, but not perhaps the least, is that there will be denazification of the Ukrainian military and Ukrainian society. Sadly, over the last three decades, there has been, as uh, in one of the documentary made by Oliver Stone, you can find, uh, there has been a rise of neo-Nazi movements 
uh, in various segments of the Ukrainian society, which is very sad. Those neo-Nazis have given very hard time to nice and decent Ukrainians, as well as to the Russians that uh, populate East Ukraine. And for my late, for my first update, you'll remember that I've given you the outline of the uh, of the uh, of the population, uh, and that I've mentioned to you that there are areas that were given during the communist regime that were given to Ukraine that were never Ukrainian. That those areas were always populated mostly by the Russians, including the including the Crimea. Now. So there have been there have been some talks. There's some kind of optimism with all of us that things will finally work out. But Russians will not give up on their demands, and Ukrainians stubbornly continue to, of course, uh, uh, resist the Russian attacks. But uh, frankly, brethren, I told you last time, uh, Russia has a huge, mighty military power. And it has been very clear to me since the very beginning of this conflict that uh, there is no way that Ukraine could ever wage a war on its own and conquer Russia. That's why Ukraine now finds itself kind of uh, feels abandoned by the Western allies because the Western allies, the NATO, were and the European Union, they were you know always promising Ukraine they'll be standing with Ukraine, they'll be helping Ukraine, they'll. Not betray the Ukrainians, but you see, nobody dares enter into a direct conflict with the Russian forces. Nobody dares because Russian, mili- Russian might, military might has been extensive. We don't even know to what extent. And as you know, the Russian president said that whoever would meddle into this conflict would be regarded as a legitimate military target. Would regard it as an enemy. Uh, Speaking of the war, let's mention that it was yesterday, reported yesterday or two days ago already, because time goes flies by so quickly, so uh, don't ask me for the exact dates. But um, one thing that happened was that the training center for the uh, volunteers, military volunteers on the Ukrainian side, that the the training center was located near the uh, border with Poland, within Ukraine, of course, It was hit by a Russian missile and about 30 people, well, who knows how many people died. So many of those uh, foreign mercenaries, obviously, were died. Uh, The center was staffed by NATO countries. So Russia has shown that it will not tolerate any kind of NATO presence within the Ukraine because it's close to their border. It has been reported about two or three British nationals were killed in that attack, which shows to you again that uh, there are people from other countries who are trying to kind of side with Ukraine and fight against the Russians. But uh, all of this really just saddens me. I mean, the, 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 the international madness, the madness on all the levels just reaches the terrible heights. I need to remind the British nationals of one thing that, uh, well, many will say, well, who cares? Well, you should care because you're a monarchy, and you should care. Be- you should care because the um, Russia, by its communist revolution, sadly, back in 1917, uh, 1917 and 1980, became a Soviet socialist republic. Nowadays, it's just a republic, but. Uh, I need to remind you that the uh, royal family of Russia, Tsar Nikolai, is the third cousin to the Queen Elizabeth. I'm not sure if you knew that, British nationals, but uh, just to remind you that there have been uh, family, even links between the two royal families. You should be aware of that. If it means to you or not, it doesn't matter. Nevertheless, uh, uh, perhaps... I'm telling you this because considering the biblical prophecies, there might be the time, this is only a speculation on my part, there might be a time when the, when Russian, uh, a Russian state might show great favor to the British royal family and to many of you British people for the simple reason that, uh, your future 
as far as the Bible is concerned, is uh, very tragic. Uh, the terrible drought will be one of these days hitting your home. Your homeland, your homeland is going to be devastated by the drought. There will be lack of food, there will be lack of water, there will be lack of all kinds of things. And your supposed allies, Germans, are going to slam the sanctions against you. Once they do it, they are going to weaken you from, in, from inside. And then they'll just very easily walk inside. So, uh, no, Russians are not going to, are not the ones that you should fear. Uh, <laughs> while you, uh, while you have this anti-Russian hysteria, all the time, behind your back, your supposed ally, Germany, has been preparing its own forces to one day attack you and conquer you. Oh yes, I know you will not believe this. You'll say, I'm mad, fine. Just keep saying it, I'm mad. But one of these days you'll be seeing that with your own eyes. And then you'll remember perhaps that you have heard this. But one thing is for sure, Jesus Christ is coming to, as the prophecy says, uh, Angel Gabriel said to his mother, he'll be sitting on the throne of his father David. Now, when Jesus Christ came for the first time, he did not sit on the throne of his father David, and uh, he was not proclaimed a king. But the second time, he's coming as a king of kings, and he'll have to, he has to fulfill that prophecy. But where is the, the throne of David today? Well, the throne of David, if you take the genealogy of your Queen Elizabeth, you can easily find it on the internet. Oh, the, the throne of Queen Elizabeth is actually, that's the throne of David. Because she's a direct descendant of King David. Now, Jesus Christ at his return cannot sit on a non-existent throne. But at the same time, just before he returns, the British society will be completely blotted out by their enemies. However, the throne has to continue to exist. You may wonder, where would, be, where would it exist? Well, this is just a speculation on my part. Perhaps in a mighty state of Russia that the, thankfully, European Union, headed by Germany, will not be able to conquer. So, back to the war stories. It was reported yesterday, or two days ago now, that uh, Ukrainian government forces continued to attack the uh, area populated by the Russians in East Europe. Uh, in the very capital of Donbass, they hit one of the... Uh, well, it was the... That, 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 that was a rocket which was somehow met by the uh, anti-rocket system in that republic. However, even though it was met, the rocket fell on the administrative building in the uh, capital of the Russian populated area in East Ukraine, Donetsk. Killed about 20 people, wounded about 30 people more. And it fell just right there in the downtown of the Donetsk. Uh, various others, various other settlements in the those Russian populated areas have been basically targeted by the Ukrainian government forces. Ukrainian government forces made one of the fortresses, we might say, within uh, the Russian populated area. Now, and now that fortress is now being attacked by the Russians. The Russians have also besieged, as I told you last time, the city of Mariupol. And I expressed to you my grave concern that the city of Mariupol would most likely be the greatest victim of this conflict. Well, sadly, what I felt would happen did happen. You see, the city of Mariupol is on a strategic spot. It's right there, close to the Ukrainian mainland. At the same time, it's at the same time very close to these Russian-populated areas. Half of the city was populated by the Russians, half by the Ukrainians. There was a significant uh, members of Greek community. Uh, and some other minor communities like Belarus, Bulgarians, Jews, etc. Now the city of Mariupol is right there as a port. It's a very important port. But at the same time, it is like a, 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 a continental link, the land link between Crimea and between the uh, Russian populated areas in East Ukraine. The uh, Ukrainians, as I said, they've allowed some Nazi movements to sprout in the last 30 years. So the Ukrainian Nazis have been uh, 
uh, how shall I say that, they have been entrenched, let's say, within the city of Mariupol, and they've been using the civilians as a, sh as a shield. Um, at the same time, the city is completely besieged by the Russian forces, which did not allow the military shipments to come to Ukrainian forces inside the town or the city, and also said the humanitarian aid to the Russian forces also did not allow to enter into the city. You can just imagine what the consequence of that was. The consequence was already lack of food, lack of medicine, and so on. However, I told you last time, and I, I, I bound to repeat it, the Russians have to take the city of Mariupol at all costs, my dear friends, for the simple reason that if they allow Ukrainian forces to be there, there will be always a pocket of... Uh, not only resistance, but there will be always a pocket where, out of which Ukrainians could attack Russian populated areas in East Ukraine. And uh, so therefore, Russians have to liquidate that pocket by all means. Uh, thankfully, yesterday, finally, after a long while, the evacuation routes have been, had been opened for that city of Mariupol. And uh, so far about 2,000 cars have left the city today and it's expected that 2,000 more are in queue waiting to leave the city. Uh, the city is, again, a strategic one and Russians have to conquer it so that they'll consolidate the territory which would connect... Uh, the Donbas, eastern Ukraine, where Russians reside, and the uh, peninsula of Crimea, which I again have to repeat has always been Russian. It was never a Ukrainian territory. It was given to the Ukraine by the uh, irrational uh, decision of Nikita Khrushchev back in the Soviet Union. Crimea was given to Ukraine for no real reason. And so was Donbas, and so was the Donetsk and Lugansk areas. Uh, they're called by usually by one uh, a term, Donbass. The uh, so Ukrainians have been attacking the uh, Russian populated areas. At the same time, Russians have advanced in their attacks on the Ukrainian cities. They've taken control over several Ukrainian towns and cities, and they are now. It's expected that a big battle for the capital of Ukraine, Kiev is going to take place, possibly, within the next few days. Uh, the Russian attack, of course, has been condemned by all of the European countries, by NATO, by the United States. Uh, only It's only China which is very reserved about all of this. Chinese have been warned by the West that they should not help the Russians or they'll be isolated. To be honest with you, I don't think Chinese could care less about that. China is a huge country. China can always find secret ways, secret channels to help Russians anyway, without having any fear of the West. At the same time, uh, China has a strategic uh, relations with Russia, and China is the Sino-Russian uh, ax, ax, let's call it ax or base, is the base for the overall Asian uh, unity. The uh, It was reported three days ago that Chinese and others have been considering creating a parallel financial system for the Euro-Asian bloc. They've been considering uh, creating their own currency and their own financial system. So that's interesting because it also aligns with prophecy that many people neglect. Many people just don't know what the prophecy in the Bible tells us because they just cannot decipher the uh, origin of various modern nations. But I've been telling you for years now that you know there will be there will be there will be there is already, but there will be a very strong Euro-Asian bloc headed by Russia. And so now they're considering creating their own financial system, their own currency. So it's very possible. Now to you who live in the West, if they do use their own currency, they will certainly stop using one 
international trade currency called dollar, which will weaken dollar. It has been reported today that the euro is getting stronger and dollar is on decline on the exchange uh, 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 on the exchange list. So those that's another news. The uh, so the Russians are taking control over one area or the other in the Ukraine while the negotiations continue. Ukrainian president said that no longer they consider becoming NATO members because NATO is afraid of Russia. NATO has shown that it fears to enter into into open conflict with the Russians. And he also today announced that uh, the state of war, which he proclaimed at the beginning of the Russian invasion, the state of war has now, he has given a decree, he has signed a decree that the state of war has been extended for 30 more days. It has been estimated about 3 million Russians, sorry, 3 million Ukrainians or Ukrainian citizens have left Ukraine. The, uh, uh, I guess the, uh, what shall we say, the largest number of them went to Poland, and from there they'll probably go elsewhere. But there is a small country, Moldavia, which has taken several thousand uh, Ukrainian immigrants. It's uh, Moldavia is one of the poorest countries in Europe and the world, and it has about two or three million people. So uh, they've taken the largest number of, of refugees from Ukraine, considering the size of their population. Uh, about three million people left Ukraine which is probably the largest uh, refugee crisis ever. And this is perhaps the largest military crisis ever since the end of the Second World War. As you know, the West slammed the sanctions against uh, the Russians. Today, it was announced that the Russian administration has imposed sanctions against Joseph Biden and his his, uh, immediate administrative staff. So things that I, I told you, Russia would probably turn, Russia will turn to Asia, Russia will survive, you see Asians are considering creating their own currency, it's all coming to pass. I've told you about the city of Mariupol, the city of Mariupol has been reported by the city council that 2,500 people died in this war already in the city of Mariupol, even though the official Ukrainian figures say that about, uh, well, 600 and something civilians were killed, you see, the city of Mariupol has reported even more. And now that the civilians are being evacuated, I guess the uh, Ukrainian government forces will not surrender within the city of Mariupol, and the Russian forces have no other choice but to keep bombing them, and, you know, they have to try to expel them by force, because the Mariupol as a strategic point is necessary to Russia to have a direct link between Crimea and the Russian populated areas in East Ukraine. There has been something else that is very disturbing, brethren and friends, terribly disturbing, and uh, this is something that should really disturb all the taxpayers in America and elsewhere. It has been only reported even before this war by the Russians that there are about 30 biological laboratories financed by Pentagon uh, that they're working in uh, Ukraine, not far away from the Russian border. Uh, at first, of course, the uh, the American administration would, of course, deny that, but Victoria Newland was the one that the other day alluded to those biological laboratories and expressed her fear that such laboratories may fall into Russian hands. And look how false, what a, what a, you know, how falsely they are trying to blame Russians. They say now, Russians may use biological weapons against Ukraine. Well, I'm asking you, I'm asking all of you who has still have common sense in this mad world, what in the world are they doing 30 biological laboratories financed by Pentagon in Ukraine. What have they been doing in Ukraine all along before the Russian invasion? 
Well, my dear friends, to your shock, the biological material found says, according to the press clippings that I've read, that it was... Those labs were experimenting with bats to see how the bats could possibly carry various viruses. Or it has been experimenting with viruses to see viruses that would po possibly be spread by the birds migrating between the Russian and the Ukrainian territories. Even more disturbing, the DNA material found in those labs, because some of it fell into the Russian hands, uh, uh, to the sadness of Joseph Biden and his administration, the DNA material shows that those viruses have been specially tailored, specially created for a certain ethnic group. That ethnic group is Slavs, Slavic people. Isn't that interesting? If that's not a premeditated genocide, I don't know what is. I have to remind you that in Slavic people also belongs my country. It's regarded as a Slavic nation. And so, again, for you American taxpayers, if you care to know, your government has been using your money to finance 30 or even more laboratories, biological laboratories in Ukraine, not far away from the border with Russia, with the purpose to exterminate Slavic population, or experimenting and uh, exploring the ways how it could possibly harm the Slavic population. Well, one way or the other, it's, it is a terrible thing. So you should know about that. Victoria Newland blurted it out in one of her press conferences. It was later denied by Joseph Biden. But whether he likes to deny it or not, both Russia and China are going to demand and ask and request Washington very soon to explain what were those 30 laboratories doing in Ukraine. At the same time, you had the uh, urgence from the World Health Organization, which urged Ukraine to destroy all those labs, lest those materials would fall into the Russian hands. <laughs> oh, really? Destroy all the evidence of the criminal record of Joseph Biden and his administration. Oh, my dear friends, that is not going to work. That's not going to work because some of those biological materials have fallen already into hands of the Russians. And so the American administration will have a very unpleasant duty to explain to the world public, first of all, why and what those laboratories were doing in Ukraine before the invasion of Russia, and to explain the uh, content of content and purpose of those laboratories. But just, I'm just telling you all this that you will realize why the United States of America is going to be now hated by the Asian countries and Asian nations and the Slavic nations as well. Very sad. How sad, how tragic. And uh, we don't know what Joseph Biden is going to respond to the, those charges. And it doesn't really matter. Well, many of the things that he has been responding is really based on lies. And today, I think I've read, I've heard on the news that he signed a, a new budget in which he allotted a huge sum of money to Ukraine. This sad figure called Joseph Biden seems to be living in an unreal world, my dear friends. The level of debt in America is terrible. The uh, level of corruption of the American government is now being exposed. The prices of gas, as a result of this war and sanctions against Russia, have drastically and dramatically increased. And, you know, in the midst of all of that, he signs a decree giving huge sums of money to Ukraine. For what purpose? By the way, some of those uh, shipments of arms that were sent by the uh, other countries to Ukraine fell also into the Russian hands. But again, made the American public know there had been laboratory laboratories in Ukraine in which some evil people with evil intentions were 
developing viruses and experimenting with bats and birds with the purpose to spread those biological diseases to the Slavic population, read to the Russians and other Slavs potentially. And for that, the Biden administration will have to give its own account. It'll probably lie to all of you, but so be it. Oh, by the way, the channel Russia Today, I, I'm, I've, I've, informed, I've been informed, has opened its own uh, account uh, on Gap News. So on Gap, on Gap News, you're going to hear, uh, you can hear the Russian side of the story if you care, but they have now the account there. So, uh, not all of this censorship has been, uh, has been going, well, not all of the censorship will have its effect on the, on the Russian side either. Uh, also it's very interesting that the Russian, uh, platform Telegram has been used by Ukrainians, even by the Ukrainian government officials, as well as by the Russians. So, uh, thankfully, hopefully this madness will stop very soon. Um, so this about the biological laboratories was the most important thing I wanted to mention to you. And the uh, Joseph Biden and his administration will have some serious things to, serious answers to give to the world public. But at the same time, to all of your American public, I mean, the American society with the gas prices and so on, and uh, with all the debts and all the various other problems within, he has allotted huge sum of money to Ukraine for what? To fight, to, to fight and kill the Russians. It's not going to work, my dear friends. It is not going to work. It's a wasted money. No, Ukraine, with all the help that you may, that, that, that the any administration may provide, Ukraine cannot conquer Russia, my dear friends. And it is, I, I, I just wonder, the Ukrainian president, how, Blind he could be. Yeah, they could, they could provide certain resistance for a while. They can kill an X number of uh, Russian soldiers and destroy an X number of whatever of Russian weaponry, but still, still, and regardless of all of that, the Russian might, they cannot conquer. And how can one be so blind that, well, how can be, you know, Satan never gives up. So, uh, so is with any dictator, whichever, uh, whoever that dictator might be. So there was, there have been these reports on the West, but these barbaric, horrible Russians who have been killing the Ukrainians and so on. Well, they said they're not really targeting the civilians, and I'm sure they don't, but sadly, in any conflict, civilians always suffer, which I do not approve of. Uh, I do understand that they intervened to protect the Russian populated areas from the Ukrainian government forces, but I certainly very feel very sad over the fact that so many Ukrainians, well, so many, I don't know how many we'll see, have died already. And my predictions about the that the largest war devastation was reserved for the city of Mariupol, sadly, have been coming true. Uh, is there anything else important that I might have missed? So let me just think for a while. Let me think for a while. I think, no, I think I've given you the most important details so far. The biological labs financed by Pentagon, indeed, is the great news. But the content of those labs is very disturbing. One of these days, you, the American public, will have to know about that I will certainly hear about that we do hope that these negotiations between the two parties will finally produce at least truce before it would proceed to some other some other uh, resolutions or some other ways or some other arrangements we'll see how is that going to be work be worked out we do hope that I do hope that the Ukrainian leadership would finally come to its senses and realize that they're just sacrificing the civilian population for no reason. And um, I do hope that Russians will... They're stronger, but I do hope that they'll really keep their words not to destroy the uh, civilians and that they will allow civilians to leave and so on. Leave those war-torn areas. Uh, basically, Western Ukraine hasn't been even 
hasn't been even uh, touched by this war yet. All of these things hap are happening in the northern and eastern parts of Ukraine. So I felt I should give you this second update. Perhaps in this one you will hear again the details that you may not hear elsewhere. Uh, we do hope that it will not. This will not. This is not going to last for too long, or that it is going to end very soon because he has been really mad. It's a total madness. It's total sadness, and for the Slavic world, it's just a great shame that the two Slavic nations are at war, and usually for foreign interests, not even for their own. Well, that's the always result of the corrupted governments that, sadly, the Slavic nations usually do have. So, uh, hopefully, I hope this will be my last update that there'll be that this war is going to an end, to come to an end very quickly. That is going to really end soon, so that I will not be having to give you another update. But once the war is over. We all we will all have to face some truths, uh, and we are going to face and see what was the uh, bad propaganda. Uh, we're going to see the one-sided approach of various countries and peoples, and so on. Oh yes, it's another news that came up that there is a Fox uh, a Fox News. Uh, journalist and a Fox News cameraman were killed in one of these operations being uh, being done by the Russian forces if their families can hear me my sincere condolences to your families I feel deeply sorry that journalists also suffer in war and I feel sorry that your family members died far away from home in a senseless conflict between the two Slavic nations. This was my second update from East Europe on Ukraine. May we very soon see the end of this tragic conflict.